Amen. If you didn't get through with your nap, that music should wake you up and make you stand up and get ready to worship God. We're here to praise Him. God's here to bless us. So I just ask you, if you will, just stand. Father, God, as we come once again on the Sabbath day to worship the one and only true God, we pray, God, that you're just going to pour out your spirit tonight in a mighty way. God, everyone that has come has come with expectation that they will be blessed because you promised and you've never broken a promise. Bless the service. God, we're here to worship you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As the ushers come forward, you just ask God, what would you have me do tonight? It's good to put your money into play, put your heart in God's hand, commit yourself to go where he sends you, and to speak what he tells you. So we just want to thank him tonight, Father, as we receive the tithes, the offerings, God, in on your behalf. God, we pray that you would just bless us together. Bless the ones that give, the ones that uh, take control of the money to use it for your glory. And again, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you this afternoon. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for being the awesome God that you are. Thank you for blessing Brother Danny so they can be back in service with us tonight. Lord, we ask your blessings upon this offers, offering multiply it for its intended use, and we'll give you the praise forever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The last two Sundays in Sunday school, I've challenged our Sunday school class to really stop. We're doing this thing called the overwhelm challenge. And we all tend to get overwhelmed in a day, right? Most of us, right, with something that's going on. And the challenge was just to take 10 minutes a day and just check out. And when you check out, you spend that time just reflecting on who God is. And, remi and just remind you, right? Just remind ourselves of who God is, what he's done for us, and to ground ourselves again so that we can continue to go. This next song, I think, says that completely. It says, shout to the Lord. He's our Savior. He's my Jesus. There's none like him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me just say, it's good, good, good to see you in God's house. Miss Shirley Grantham has been here two times in a row. And 
we've got others that have been here weeks, and he is one of our members, but he's been attending another church, but he's back on the night that they don't have a service. So we just, Kelly, it's good to see you, good to hear. Let me just say that this morning, we announced that Miss Phyllis Howell, her nursery worker's daughter, was in Jacksonville on the van. They have called the family in, and they don't have a good outlook. But I can tell you, and I told them, God is still in control. Amen. Nothing can happen unless God allows it to happen or says for it to happen. So you just keep uh, Christy, I mean, uh, Cindy in your prayers. Um, let me give you some names. Ms. Doris Clark is recovering from her fall. Nothing broken. Richard said he's grateful for that. He said she doesn't look real pretty right now. But it's going to get better. Brother Richard goes tomorrow to get his eye surgery. He said he's not dreading it. He's ready to get where he can see. And God's going to work it out. Continue to remember Leslie Quiet. Uh, she's going to have surgery tomorrow. Continue to remember David Newman. He's going to have surgery, but it's not scheduled yet. So continue to remember <clears throat> Marie Oliver. She's recovering. Christy Gill is recovering. Brother Danny is recovering, and he's, let's say, from here to here on his recovery, but he's not quite finished, so don't give up your prayer. Continue to pray. God's going to bring him through, put him right back here in his pulpit to preach. But um, continue to remember the Glenn Musgrove family in their lives. And I just want to say to Richard, for Danny, when you go through what Danny has been through, and you have somebody like Richard that you can call and say, look, I need you to fill this pool here for this church and deliver the message of God. That's got to be a satisfaction. So we thank you, Richard. You're going to come. You're going to deliver. Let's just go to God in prayer. Well, Brenda, you shouldn't be moving. <laughs> Danny. I, I know, I know that Danny said you need to move around. But when you get my age and you get used to doing this and you move around, I may not see you. But Brenda is back. Thank God he's blessed her, and we're looking for good things to happen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, God, it's so good to be in your house. God, I think about most of the ones in this sanctuary tonight are husband and wife, and they are not from the same physical, earthly family. But God, as I look around and I made a joke, 
Lord, about Brenda Booth. And God, there's not a person in this sanctuary that you could overlook ever. You will never leave or never forsake one of your children. So God, I pray for your blessing on every person that has come to worship you. I pray that we will leave every care, every need, every concern on the outside and just say, Lord, we're here to praise you. And God, I do thank you for visitors, for our regular members. But most of all, God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is always here. And God, as you move in this congregation, if there's one who has problems in their life, needs to come to this altar, needs to confess or pray or repent, God, you just give them the freedom and the desire to move when you call. And God, we pray for Richard, Continue to heal those that are recovering. Continue to bless Richard as he preaches. And we again thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 In, they're in the foyer, he says. Um, trunk or treat, we just need your trunk. We need you to come and sign up, see Rhonda Ponsell. She said we got nine cars from this morning, so yay. <laughs> That's great, but we need more. So if you can spare your time and your trunk, um, you're in charge of your trunk. You get your own game. You get your own candy. However you want to do it, your trunk is yours to decorate as you see fit. And uh, we will be feeding that night also. We'll have some hot dogs and some chips and things. And so it's going to be a fun night. So don't forget, sign up in the back. Don't wait till the last minute because Rhonda's got to plan these things. So please see her tonight if you have any questions. Special treat, Miss Sherry's going to come sing for us. Yay! <laughs> this is one of a, an old song that I do. But it's one of my favorites. It talks about how God is the only reason and how he has blessed us. I know that I'm blessed. Um, sitting my mama for her to be able to come back to church. Amen. It, it's um, funny how time flies, but um, 19 months that she has not been in church before Wednesday night. And um, we watch the services on TV at home, but it's not the same as being here. Um, because you can, you can feel a difference when you're here. Oh, what a reason. I've been blessed with 
with many things. God's been so good to me. I have family and friends who share in all I do. But if I lose it all and I am left, I'm left with nothing. If I have the Lord, I know I'll make it through. He's the only reason I leave, but oh, what a reason. He's the only reason I leave, but oh, what a reason. There's nothing in this world worth living for. It only leaves you empty, longing for more. He's the only reason I live, but oh, what a reason. You may have tried a lot of things to find real happiness. But if you've looked very long, then you know it just can't be found. Until you find the Lord in the power of His Spirit, He'll be your reason. He'll never let you down. He's the only reason I live. But oh, what a reason. He's the only reason I live. But oh, what a reason. There's nothing in this world worth living for. It only leaves you empty, longing for more. He's the only reason I live. But oh, sing like that, I'd sing. 
I sang, she sings. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I thank God for people that are willing to take their talent and use it for the glory of God. We appreciate all of you for being here tonight. And uh, Sister Shirley, it's always a thrill to have you. And I miss you testifying every now and then. Amen. Amen. Can you give us a word? That's right, amen. We appreciate her being able to be here. And uh, again, I appreciate the songs that we had tonight. Everything just goes together real good. And uh, they gave me an extra minute. Can you believe that? But we do appreciate the goodness of God. Again, I want to, I don't know if they got to see it this morning, but maybe Don and Dick Hazard will be able to see the service uh, up in the far country. I don't know. I didn't know that you could get there from here, to be honest with you. I, I thought that was so far off the beaten path up there, just when you couldn't find it. But uh, we miss them and look forward to their soon, soon return. Tonight we are privileged to give a good report. Uh, my wife, um, as many of you know, had fallen and, and uh, she and the dog. Uh, but she's doing much better much better, and she really appreciates your prayers, <clears throat> and it is good to see Sister Brenda here tonight, and uh, all the rest of you, even Tish, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is, this is twice in a row out here, but hey, you know, but we appreciate all of you for being here, uh, every one of you, brother, it is good to see you tonight. I saw you here the other night, and you got out before I could get back there to you. I'm, not, I'm 75. I don't get back there quite as quick as I used to. <laughs> so, but we are glad you're here in the house of the Lord this evening, and all here. Uh, praise the Lord. Turn around and shake hands with somebody and tell them, you're glad they're in the house of the Lord. Come on. Tell them. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. I was glad myself, brother. <laughs> I love you. I love you too, brother. If you have your Bibles tonight, <clears throat> and will turn with us uh, to 1 Peter 2, the second chapter, 1 Peter. And uh, I want to read a scripture. We've quoted this scripture many times. And we've looked at <clears throat> some of the things pertaining to it. But I want to talk on it for just a little this evening because I want to talk about what God is doing for us. We are 
<clears throat> a people, as we will find out in just a few moments, not the greatest people in the world prior to Christ. But the Bible says concerning the children of God that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Let us bow our heads. Our Father God in heaven, I thank you for this night. I thank you for the wonderful songs, the special Lord. I thank you for God, those that are able to be in the house of the Lord. For those that are viewing and God, that are unable to be here, Father, we pray that you would reach out and touch them as well. It's good to see our sister back after 19 months. Lord, that's a long time to be out of the house of God. But Lord, the Spirit stays alive. Lord, I know that you have been with her. And Lord, all of these others that are able to be here tonight, that have been sick in body and not able to get up and go, but Lord, you have brought them back. And Lord, let us rejoice and let them rejoice with us. Lord, as we thank you and we praise you for all of your grace and love. And Father, we'll bless you right now. In Jesus' loving name, amen. amen. The Apostle Peter was talking to the church. And you have to understand, there as the... Uh, Solomon said there is no new thing on the earth. It's all the same. And uh, I know that some of you uh, this morning were a little confused whether it was Moses or whether it was Joshua. Well, let me tell you. I've had Moses sail the ark all the way from San Francisco to Yamaha, Japan. So it's all right. <laughs> ah, Lord. But anyway, we won't cover that ground again because I'll mess it up again. But anyhow, Peter was talking to the church, and you have to realize there's nothing new. There's no new thing on the earth. All the same problems that we have today, they're the problems we had yesterday. I hear people talk about yearning for the good old days. Well, let me tell you, they're no different then than they are now. Nothing. The only thing that's changed is they paved Carswell Avenue. <laughs> Thank the Lord. But nothing else. Everything else is the same. I remember hard times, and, and we didn't even go through hard times. There are some of those that came out of, up out of hard times, out of the depression. Some of you have been there, and some of you have experienced it, had family that have experienced it, and you understand and know. You want to go back to that? I want to stay right where I am, because you want me to tell you what? If I live to see tomorrow, I'm one day closer to the coming of the Lord. Amen. And I am looking forward to, to see in those eastern skies shine out bright and hear the trump of God sound. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about it, and it's, it's going to be a wonderful time. I look for it. I, I, I mean it. I look for it. Now, I don't see anybody got a bus pulled up out there in the front to load anybody up, so we'll just stay here as long as the Lord will let us. And I hope and pray. I was reading a little something today, and if I had it, I'd bring it up. But that would be another 30-minute project, too. But uh, Tim Tebow, one of the finest young men I, I believe I've ever had the privilege of reading and, and seeing and uh, watching his life. He puts his life out and says, here it is. If you can find fault with it, do it. 
And uh, I really appreciate uh, the things that he has to say. And in one of the things that he was talking, and I'll just summarize, summarize it because I won't be able to say it all. But he said, we're only here for a short period of time. Do everything you can while you're here. Love everybody that you can love. Help everybody that you can help. Witness to everybody that you can witness. Be that light. Nothing is changing for us. The only thing that I see in here that has changed, and I can't see back there, but uh, the only thing that I've seen up here is that... uh, Brother Goddard talked to me one time, he's, and my daughter mentioned it while a, uh, a little earlier they watched the service, and she said, you get mighty close to the edge. <laughs> and Brother Goddard said, you get mighty close to the edge, and I'm <laughs> looking right at him. <laughs> I figured he'd catch me. <laughs> yeah. He'd be, he'd be doing one of them Olays. Olay. <laughs> but things are the same. Peter said that in times past, we were, a peop- were not the people of God, and we had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Now, I read a little something, and I want to try to read that back to you. It said, the essential perfection of, in God, in, in hereby, he perfi- or pit of, pit of, pities and relieves the miseries of his people. That's mercy. We have to look at God and say, Father, have mercy on me. Out of mercy flows grace, the favor of God. But it's first mercy. And when he looks out and he sees his people, he understands our plight. I love the old song that said, he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I know that one time I was not worthy. Paul was a man who was very honest, and I've made mention many times before. And when he was talked and questioned about it, what was his response? I am an apostle not worthy to be called an apostle. I'm not worthy to be here. I'm here because God called me. And I am here doing what God has told me to do, but I am not worthy to be here. Why? Because I persecuted God's church. There were people that, good people, that were imprisoned and some were killed at the word of Paul. So he understood what it was to say that I am not worthy to be called an apostle. I'm not worthy to be called a child of God. We have a God, a peace that passes understanding. Jude said, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. To you that are called of God, the first thing off the bat is to find mercy and find that mercy in Christ, to be made whole in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. In Titus, the second chapter, the Bible says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Now here, Paul writing this to the young man Titus. And he was telling Titus, you know, don't give heed to a lot of these things, whether it be Jewish fables or whether there be uh, issues that are brought up inside of the church. But when you get up 
the minister of that church, when you get up, speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. We don't have time to be talking nonsense. We have to talk things that are truthful and things that are meaningful, things that are of God. We have children that are lost. We have family that are lost. We have friends that are lost. We had workers that are lost. There's a lost and a dying world out here, and they're needing somebody that will stand up and just tell the truth. My daddy had a saying one time. He said, of of one person that we knew, he said, he'd climb a hundred foot barbed wire to tell a lie when standing flat footed on the ground and telling the truth would be much better for him. There's some people just like that. (laughs) But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Paul was a very educated and knowledgeable man. Because he didn't say, and the old women, he said the aged women. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine. Y'all stay away from that wine. Teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. We skip down. He said, in all things, in the seventh verse, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. We have been given direction in the Word of God pertaining to our life. We're looking for mercy. We are seeking out for the mercy of God. But there comes something with it that, you know, oh, you don't have to worry about it. You can do whatever you want to do. You can live like you want to do. Yeah, once you said, I forgive me, everything's fine from now on through all of eternity. That's a lie that's going to take a lot of people to a devil's hell. And if somebody says that and they didn't like what I said, you can tell them to come see me and we'll discuss it. We won't fuss over it, but we'll discuss it. Because it might be a whole lot bigger than me. But we need to have a heart that is filled with the goodness of God. We need to have a heart that we can stand back and say, Lord... I, I, need your, I need your touch. I need your blessing. I need your mercy. I need the favor of God. I need to be forgiven. This mercy comes about and brings with it peace. Now the brother talked about a while ago that we have peace in the things towards God and towards us. And, and I have peace. Because I know my my Redeemer liveth. I know that God lives. I know. I don't have to come up and have somebody tell me. And I don't need to be reminded every five minutes. But I appreciate it when I am. But I know that He lives. And I know that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And that diligent seeking is one that says, I'm not going to be deterred. I'm not going to be put aside. I'm going to hold on. Whatever comes about, all I need to do is just touch the hem of his garment and I can be made whole. But I'm going to take a hold of the horns of the altar and I'm not going to turn loose until I get a blessing. I need God. I need to have him in my life. The Bible says, Speak no evil of an old man. Be brawler. But gentle, 
showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Now listen to this. I know that some of you have lived a perfect life from your youth up. You might have had a couple of bad weekends, but other than that, you've done real well. But Paul said, for we ourselves. Now, he's not talking, y'all going to have to get this straightened out with yourselves. Paul saying, we, we. Paul saying, I've had problems. I've had the times that I was not worthy to be called an apostle. But we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Now, you know me to tell you who he's talking to? He's talking to the church. This book wasn't written to the heathen, it was written to the church. And when there are problems that are exposed inside of here, it wasn't just to go and say, uh, if y'all would get y'all's life straightened out like I've got mine straightened out, y'all could be straightened out like me. No. What it's saying is you need to get your life straightened out. And if you'd get your life straightened out, you don't have a thing to a problem with God. But see, he said, we are those that are living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. I was talking to uh, Brother Walter earlier, and when he brought up something I'd said a long time ago, and we won't bring that up. And but anyway. We were, we were talking about it, and I told him, I said, you know, and it was because uh, a preacher and, and so forth of that nature, and I said, if you hang around the church long enough, what you need to do is be a preacher because you get to be around a bunch of other preachers. That's who you hang with. You don't hang with them other folks. You hang with the other preachers because they can just about pity you and have compassion on you and they know what you're going through. (laughs) Amen. Amen. I should have had Danny up shouting right there. (laughs) But see, they understand. And I said, you hang around with them long enough. There's no telling what you're going to find out. (laughs) Or what you're going to experience or see if you just hang with them long enough. There's one, it, is, it is such a weird thing that happens uh, to, to preachers. They, I don't know if it happens to everybody else the same way. But preachers can go through it and they have a time. But he, here, he is saying that things were terrible. Things were terrible in my life. They were terrible in your life, but I thank God that this thing doesn't end with how bad we are. I'm thanking God that this thing does not end with how terrible the world is or how terrible every situation is. But the Bible says, but after that, amen, but after that, praise the Lord. It's always that that comes afterwards. Thank God. We were lost in sin, but Calvary, praise the Lord. We were lost without hope, but one reached a hand down and said, come unto me. That's what happens after that, after that, after all the problems that we had, after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, and his name is called Jesus. He is the changer of all things. He makes everything right. When you come around his presence, everything is going to come out good. Praise the Lord. You can seek him early in the morning, 
Praise the Lord. You can find him whenever you look for him. You don't have to go off and say, I don't know where God is. I can't find him anywhere. He doesn't love me anymore. Oh, yes, he does. If you'll just look right over to your side, he's standing there. Praise God. He's standing there. And when you look at him, that old problem that you had out in front of you that was greater than you, when you look at him that next time, you see Jesus standing there and he's got that evil thing by the neck and he's not going to turn it loose. But he's given you deliverance out of his mercy. Praise the Lord. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. It's not by what we've done. Praise the Lord, I, didn't, I don't deserve anything. I, I don't. I, I, I count it all joy. I, I, uh, you know, I, I appreciate to hear uh, good preaching. I, I do. Uh, I appreciate it if they had somebody else up here preaching and I was sitting right back over there. Nobody get my nest while I'm not there now. That's mine. <laughs> Sister Brenda came over there and she was standing over here. And I said, why are you walking way over yonder? You barely can make it. Why don't you sit right there? She said, well, I noticed that reserve sign. I said, it's reserved for you. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Just sit down. Praise the Lord. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace. Do you understand that word? Justified. It means there's no guilt. That means nobody can stand up and say, yeah, but. No, we've been justified by His grace. Praise the Lord. He extended it out to us and said, if you will come and take of the water of life freely, praise God, you will live and you will never thirst again. If I had to go back and try to relive my life, Tommy, I don't know what would go on here. I don't have to. I don't relive it. There are things in my past that I'm not proud of. Now, I know the rest of you have lived a haloed life. I understand. Especially Tish. If you don't believe her, ask her. But see, I, I know that. And I know that when I look at my life, Brother Goddard, I know where he brought me out of. Amen. Amen? I know where I was. And I know where I was headed. Not only in this life. My life was on a downhill spiral. I was going down. But I had no eternal life to look forward to. But that night at an old-fashioned altar, I didn't go down to shake somebody's hand. I went and talked to the Master Himself. Amen. Praise God. And I poured out my heart to Him, and I asked Him to come into my life, and by His grace and mercy, oh God, have mercy upon us all. He reached down into my life and took away that old sin and shame and guilt and all the pain. And praise God, He made me whole again in Jesus' loving name. I can rejoice today because I don't have to look back. Oh, praise the Lord. He cast it away from Him as far as the east is from the west. And I let Him. I don't need it. I don't need to be reminded of it. And when somebody comes up and they start talking about, oh, you, you, no, I don't. I don't. 
I don't want to go there. I'm not going there. I don't need it. We've had people delivered from all manner of hard evil. Things that possess a life. But sin is sin. There's no, there's no worse sin than any other sin. There's some things that are harder to deal with. And you will not be able to deal with them. But the day that you bring them to the altar of God. And the Bible said when you get there, you leave that thing there. Whether it be a blessing or whether it be your life, your sin, whatever it is, get up, walk away, and don't look back. God has delivered you out of a Sodom and Gomorrah. He will deliver a lot in his family. Praise God when they doesn't have to look back. Don't look back. Don't want it back there anymore. All we got to do is say, God, give me your mercy and grace that I can live for you for the rest of my life. And God will grant that and give you the power. Amen. 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 What do we got, another 30 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But that being justified by his grace, we should be made, his heir, made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. I thank God that I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. He didn't count it a shameful thing, and neither shall I. But God has called me into His purpose and plan. Amen. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will, that thou affirm constantly. He's talking to Titus again. That you affirm or that you tell and you continue to speak these things constantly. That they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. There's nothing wrong with living a good life. Amen. In fact, the matter is, it's required. It's required. You want to test whether you're of the faith or not? Look at your own life. Look at what you're doing and what you're saying, where you're going, how you're up and about God's business. See what's happening. And from there, you'll be able to tell Yes, I am living for God, or no, I am not. I don't need to tell you, and Danny doesn't need to tell you. No one else needs to tell you. There's the evidence. We got in there this morning to have prayer, and I appreciate that. We had several of the young men in there. They were ready to skedaddle. The problem was they were all the way inside and there were a whole lot of folk between them and the door. <laughs> so we got to pray and they got to pray with us. I don't know how many people we had in there. Must have had a, nearly a dozen people in there, Brother Danny. It was a great outpouring. And I said, there's not a, to myself, I said, there can't be another man left inside of that church house. They're all in this office. That was a crowd. But the people of God wanted something. They were coming into the house of worship seeking something. They wanted God's blessing in their life. Let me tell you something. I've said a whole lot of things tonight. 99 and 99, 100% of them will mean absolutely nothing to you. But that one 100th, that's all God needs is that little mustard seed of faith. Amen. All he needs is that one little bit. And if you'll let it grow, 
Praise God, it'll grow into a great plant. It'll grow into a greater life than you've ever experienced before. We're seeking the goodness of God. We need His presence. We need His goodness. We need His mercy. Amen. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, I thank you for the privilege again of being in the house of worship. God, together, together with your saints. Lord, what a beautiful people. We truly are a blessed people. We can come in here and rejoice, come in here with clean hands and a pure heart. And Lord, we can lift up the worthy name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We can worship you in song and in prayer and in attendance. And Father, we bless you right now. God, we ask you, O oh Lord, if there be one in this house that has a need, that, Master, that you would reach out through your spirit and touch that life. God, give us strength and mercy. Give us your peace. Let the goodness of God, Lord, that peace that passeth all understanding, let that peace be known in every heart, in every life. For God, we can have that. We don't have to worry anymore. Nothing. It's all taken care of at Calvary. It is finished. Father, bless. While every head is bowed, every eye closed for just a moment. Is there one in the house tonight you need a touch from God? You need a blessing? You need God 